Okay, um, my name is Philip Bauer, I'm from Germany and I have not been here at 10 something because the program was changed. My second, there's three talks by me today, so I'm a little sorry for maybe I'm a little disorganized, but the organizers moved some talks around, so I have this talk now and then three 50, there's the migrations talk is not here, but some other room down there. You'll find it if you check the website, if you want to see that. Okay, uh, this is Pimp My Plone. I've been giving uh, talks called Pimp My Plone for a few years now uh, at the Vol uh, Plone days. Uh, this is not one of them because uh, Pimp My Plone at Vol Plone days are usually uh, I showcase add-ons that I really like and there were some among them that I'm not proud about having showcased, uh, but I was young, I needed the money. Uh, so now I'm gonna talk about how to mistake, uh, how to undo or prevent doing these errors uh, when you follow one of these earlier talks. So, I don't know if you're familiar with that TV show, that's kind of dated. But um, if you want to extend your plone car with shiny add-ons, there's several to choose from. There's over 1,000 uh, 1, repositories in the Plone Collective on GitHub. There is the product section on plone.org that actually holds 2,170 objects. Not all of them are unique, so, so there's like different uh, revisions of the same software in there. And the search for Plone on PyPy actually yields 2,800 packages. And as you can imagine, the quality uh, of all these uh, add-ons uh, is very different uh, in maturity, age, reliability, and as I said, quality. So nobody can really say that they know all of these add-ons and I don't know if the, you know this elephant is by a book from Dr. Suss, and he's looking for the one true, uh, it's a plant, and there's actually a planet on this plant. So if you don't want to be stuck on, on a mountain looking down upon a field of add-ons and despair, uh, you need a plan. So you should first, can anyone actually see this? It's terrible resolution. I'm sorry. Uh, well, there's no, nothing really on that piece of napkin. Uh, you should find your own napkin and put something on there. Uh, you should make a plan to find out, and you need to find out what you really need. So, because surprisingly often you don't know what you need, and that makes it kind of hard to look for an add-on. Um, but on the other hand, that's a good thing because you'll, if you think you. What, know what you need 100%, you're never going to find anything that matches your, um, your needs 100%. So you need to adapt. And that is, so you have, you see, this is making a square peg fit, fit a hole, a round hole. So sometimes you need to change your expectations to fit to what it's, is available or you need to invest the time and the money to change the add-ons uh, that are available to fit your needs, or either, and that's perfectly acceptable, create your own add-on that does exactly what you need. And usually in any, any single project, we have all of these three cases at the same time, not with the same add-on. So you need to be, to need to be, to be able to prioritize, uh, to make a deformed decision, you need to prioritize. You have to need a list of stuff uh, that you really, really need, like playing videos on iOS, Firefox, and IA8. Uh, maybe a flash fallback that would be, yeah, also a must-have. Let's put it in this table. Uh, support of HTML5 videos, uh, that's just a nice to have. So if you align your... Um, priorities like this, uh, you'll be able to make a decision once you've found some uh, candidates. But how to find these candidates? Uh, we had this talk by Paul Rowland yesterday. So, um, you know, if you, you were there, you know the problem. Uh, because there is not 
one good list of add-ons. They are either uh, too few, like on plone.org, got 41 projects matching your criteria, and the criteria is any pro pro uh, product fit for Plone 4.3. That is ridiculous. It's also not true. Or there's way too many. This is the uh, completely unreadable uh, result list on PyPy for Plone. It's like 3,000 something. So um, this could be a list um, that you could follow by uh, when you search. And you should definitely follow that list be before you write a, uh, to, the new, new, uh, to the IRC list or before you ask, uh, on, uh, ask on the mailing list. Uh, so that's plum.org products. Uh, pyp.org and it has a search form and you're supposed to use that. Uh, the GitHub Collective with its 1,000 repositories and you can search for a name there too. It actually helped me some of the times to have an idea, oh I need something that could have a name like this, just search and oh there's something. Uh, and also GitHub Plone uh, repository, the repository holds 240 repository, uh, that organization Plone in GitHub uh, holds 240 repositories and not all of them are in the Plone core and they will never be. And there are some add-ons there that are really useful and they're not seen by you, might, maybe if you don't look hard enough. Uh, and very important, search the mailing list archive because the product that you were looking for has actually been looked by, uh, for by someone else before and use Google. Actually, most of the time they use Google before any of the other five. So do all these six and uh, then, you'll, um, then you'll be able to find something probably. In fact, um, if that's not the case, if you don't find anything there, you don't, it's no need to despair or like think that anything's broken. In fact, it only appears that we have too much choice because there's a lot of add-ons that have not yet been written. It doesn't necessarily mean that, but that, you, uh, that you need to write them, but there's a lot of stuff that does not exist or does not exist in a usable form yet. And well, then you have to write it yourself or pay someone to write it for you. And that's perfectly acceptable and usually we do one of these uh, add-ons for any project, but they never see the light of day of the public, and that should not do. So if you write an add-on for a, for a con uh, customer of yours, uh, perhaps managing staff members in a company, you should never put that on PyP, because everybody does that, and every company has different requirements, but they're all kind of similar, but very different. So there's like, there would be 50 add-ons, and they should never see the light of day, actually on the website, but not of the public. Um, so if you don't, did not fin, uh, find something and you decide, okay, I'm not gonna write something myself, you can ask on the mailing list and uh, you can get a good answer uh, on that and the IRC channel is a good thing too. I don't think Stack Overflow is the right way, uh, uh, right place to ask actually. So, and this situation, which is kind of uh, bad, will be, uh, will be improved by the shortlist, or what at the moment is the shortlist, and what Paul uh, told us about yesterday, uh, that we will vote on add-ons. And this is uh, the Google Docs page. There's a link uh, somewhere, but I'm not gonna say it out public, because I think Paul will do that in a control, more controlled manner, so you can nominate stuff there. Okay, so once you think you found something uh, and that's a likely candidate for you, you should look closely because uh, it's very possible that you're stuck forever with him or her. Uh, and there's a saying, it's a poem by Friedrich Schiller, uh, it's called Drum teste wer sich, drum prüfe wer sich ewig bindet. And that is what you should do. You should test your add-ons because uh, they may promise you features that uh, they actually don't deliver on. Uh, they say they have some uh, functionality that actually is not there. You have also te to find out if this product is fresh enough to be in your, uh, in your release because 
uh, you need to check on PyP and GitHub. When was the last release? When was the last commit? Who were the committers? Is this only one person? Has he just been run over by a bus or does he still live? Um, has it seen any recent development in the last month? Is there actually a bug tracker? And as, does it have 500 open tickets and nobody ever bothered to answer or close any one of them? This is something you definitely have to look at. You have to check if this product is compatible with the Plone version that you're using in your website because a lot of add-ons are not yet running on the newest version of Plone because we changed some minor imports, but people are not bothering to update their add-ons, or you're trying to use a Plone 2.5 or 3 version, and a lot of the better, shinier, newer add-ons will not work for that. So that is something definitely worth checking out for. Um, and you have to check if you have a special language requirement, does the add-on actually support your language? If you have a multiple languages, you usually forget to check the others. You only check the primary language. But if you have a German, French, and English page, you usually don't check for French, but you should, because otherwise you have to do that yourself. Or you end up with uh, run a pig fries crowd into. Um, nobody wants to use that website. So the question after you answered this, will you ever be rid of it? Will it die? Will you uninstall it? Because there's a lot of products that don't do that properly. Are there instructions? Do they work? Follow them through. You really need to test that properly. And you do that by first installing the product and uninstalling it, starting the site up again, Put it, uh, pulling them out of the build out, then rerunning build out, restarting the site again. If nothing breaks, you might actually be in for luck, but usually you're not. And among the bad boys are everything that starts with P4A, Plone for Artists, singing, dancing. Actually, a Lingua Plone is one of those. You'll never be, Lingua Plone will stay with you forever. Uh, but there's. Uh, yeah, you'll st uh, spend days and nights uh, trying to get rid of this stuff. Um, but there is help, and if you go to this blog post, uh, but the help is not for the, uh, for the uh, end user, but it's for the developer. So this is something we all should read. Actually, I think everybody has read it, uh, but nobody's following it. Everybody should follow it. It's a lot of work, but you should do it. And this way you can make your products uh, uninstall safely. Uh, if it won't, you'll still have a choice to use it um, and live with the consequences. Or you do it yourself and uh, improve the uninstall story there, or just use something else. So another thing to really check for are dependencies. Uh, imagine you marry the girl of your dreams and one day you re realize her brother has just been released from jail and he's now, now cr crashing in your living room. That's about the feeling that you get when you uninstall the product and it pulls in dependencies that you now have in your living room and uh, they're now living uh, with you and you're not going to get rid of them because you need the product, you decided to keep it. So check for uh, other packages in the setup PY. Uh, Few examples, it's harmless. Flow player has a dependency on, I don't actually know how to pronounce it, Hachoir, Hachoir, whatever. Uh, it's not bad, but you need to know that because sometimes you have dependencies that are not compatible or actually bad boys like Dr. Evil here. Uh, for example, the Plonup theme editor, something we use for our trainings, has a hard dependency on Zobscale 3 Alpha and Templar, so you can't use it with any other add-on that has a requirement for Zobscale 2. Um, you will get bitten by this. Uh, another, uh, it's not a dependency, but it's uh, part of the package, it's load. How many JavaScript libraries is it actually going to load in your, to your site? Uh, why is the right actual, uh, site running so slow? Uh, one f favorite example of mine is the debug toolbar. I actually love it. I use it a lot. But it adds so many items to your DOM tree that your site can become really, really slow if you use it in conjunction with, uh, with um, how's it called, Firebug and these tools. So this is something to take care of. I know the debug toolbar is nothing you put out in production, but there's a lot of other add-ons that 
require JavaScript and CSS and maybe don't, uh, don't pack this stuff and pile it onto each other until your website just topples over. Um, so what do you do if the, you like it and it's actually working but not, f not completely? Uh, just something missing. Write a bug report. Uh, there's usually a GitHub bug tracker for all the add-ons. Uh, there's still the uh, track-based uh, bug tracker for the Plone Core stuff. And uh, one example is uh, the is a good bug tracker for the products from Plone Form Gen stuff. I actually wanted to put the uh, screenshot from that. This is from the collective cover that breaks the Plone control panel. It's actually hard to find out some of these bugs. So if your bug report uh, gets ignored and you need to find someone to fix, first check who are the people who did the last commits in the last months. Maybe they're using the product for something themselves. They know it by heart already. So just send them an email and uh, ask them, hey, did you see that bug report? Can you help me with this? But if you do that and send them an email personally, be prepared to be uh, to pay them for your for that. Otherwise, just post on them. Uh, if you're not prepared to pay for services, don't contact per people individually unless you know them. If you know them, if you can ask, no problem. If you don't know them and you contact them personally, you actually should be able to uh, pay them. Um, so once you found the add-ons, um, you need to tend them and keep them in a tight and nice row. Uh, this includes the basic stuff that we all do, pinning versions, don't use source checkouts on production. Uh, if you use source checkouts, pin your revisions. Um, keeping, keep track of updates and development in the add-on that you use frequently because some at some point you will want to update your site and if you didn't follow through, like check regularly, uh, there's something I, I use, I want to have a minor update and this project has just been abandoned, you're in for uh, some additional work. Uh, to prevent bit rot, um, you need to follow uh, what's happening and be prepared to just disband the ship uh, and try to remove the package and replace it by some, something else. And by then, your add-ons should be great troopers and you should be uh, happy and your customers will be happy too. If you want, I can, no, actually, I don't wanna. Uh, I wanted to show you two examples. Uh, but I'm not going to show them, I'm just going to name them. These are just two. Um, one is collective lower emissions, pretty little known by developers. You should check it out. And the other is a lot of people are looking for it, but there's no mailing list for this, nothing happened. It's actually kind of abandoned, but it works. I use it in a product. Uh, it's, I, don't, I don't know if it's on PyPy, but if you look for... So it's something usually people say, oh, we don't have a media repository in Plone. Actually, we do, and it's actually called Plone App Media Repository. So nobody's going to find it because I think it doesn't live in the collective namespace, but in the Plone namespace, and everybody might think, oh, that's maybe a Plone 2 effort that's been abandoned, but it's seen some recent development. It's kind of nice. It's not perfect. It leads, needs a lot of love, but it's one of these packages that are just out there and kind of ignored but they should not be. They should maybe not be widely used, but they should be tended with love and respect by developers and adopted and improved on. So if you have questions, I have exactly uh, space for four of them here. Uh, I'll be willing to answer them or you can give me your input on, on add-ons. Thank you. Okay. No. Yep. One question. You want? <clears throat> I had a, a, an experience using some Plone for Artists products like five, four, four or five years ago. <laughs> Thank you. And we got a lot of trouble trying to get rid of it, of it because of because we wanted to upgrade Plone and the migration always broke. Uh, yesterday I was I saw this talk about uh, transmogrifier and this kind of 
uh, strategy for upgrading loan. Uh, do you think it, it is something that we should consider when thinking about add-ons that we should use, like uh, uh, Plan B for the case when I can't get rid of it? Uh, you should have thought of that before you installed it, actually. So you should have tested getting rid of it before you did. So it's kind of your fault, but I'm, 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 I did exactly the same. So I, and I did it over and over and over again. And I paid the price like a, a, lot, a lot of times. And uh, definitely abandoning uh, the website and migrating it to a new, uh, to a new website, another website, is an absolutely valid uh, choice there. I think it's perfectly okay to do that. But I wouldn't use Transmogrify, I think. I would just use uh, maybe ZX for, if, it depends on this size of the site. Going to have the talk on migrations and relaunches and upgrades uh, in, I don't know, an hour, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to not talk about uh, Transmogrify there, but it is an option if your site is really screwed. Definitely. Or you get help by smart people like uh, Luca Fabri, who will here. Luca Fabri, who wrote this, maybe he'll pay him some beers or money, and he'll get rid of all this stuff for him. I'm not smart enough to do that. I'm sorry. I, I was really, really desperate a lot of times. And there's so many different. Uh, blog posts and instructions how to do them, and every single one of them fails at some point. So I'm, ah, this is a terrible experience. So you do that before, because the price you pay afterwards is so much more than the effort that you have to put in before. But uh, before, when you tr look for a product and you think, OK, they, they need a slideshow, no problem. Let's just put it in easy slideshow. And like two years later, it's terrible because it has plum for artists dependencies. It it does. And I'm I was like just four weeks ago, I was nearly killing myself because of this. Other questions? Okay. So Spend the time to test your add-ons before you use them. And use the shortlist once it's ready, because all these have been tested. Then you can save yourself a lot of time and trouble. Thank you.